Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. So as promised, I'm going to shoot a quick video on uh, making a few candles. So I've already got a few done. So this is a uh, almost a 13 ounce mold right here. And it takes a bigger wick. So I've got a couple of these done already. And this one has vanilla fragrance in it. And this one is just plain beeswax which just the plain beeswax smells really nice. So you really don't have to add scent. But uh, today I'm gonna to be doing a different type of candle. So this is done with a silicon mold and it has a little hole right there in the middle. And I write a note on this so I know uh, what wick to use and how much wax it takes. But uh, so I thread the wick through that little hole Pull it out the top. I'll show you how I do this. I'm going to pour one of these and I got some different type of molds this year. So I purchased these online and they just showed up today. I got these on Amazon. It's a little octagon with the lid. It's pretty small. I don't know exactly how many ounces that is. I think it's like six to seven. And I got this bigger, nice kind of like a Yankee candle glass. And uh, these were pretty pricey. They were four dollars before tax and shipping i'll put a link below where i got these these are from amazon these for, were from a specialty glass company so with this type of uh, candle holder you use a different kind of wick that has a little base on it already and you just set it in there and i got these little adhesive tabs to stick them down in there and then this little metal piece sits on the top and that holds your wick in place at the top so it doesn't lay over to the side. Uh, let me show you my setup over here real quick. So I've got uh, two things of wax going. I got this crock pot here and I turned, I let this solidify and I kicked it on late this morning or actually it's around noon and uh, it's still melting. So I think these uh, heat to about 200 degrees when they're on low and then I got my normal wax melter here and I'll keep it wrapped in a towel to kind of help uh, maintain the heat in there so I did order another one of these that's larger so maybe I can get away from having two different pots but you can see this wax in here is liquid and I keep it turned way down like the W on warm is where it stays melted and it's got a metal valve so when you keep it wrapped up like that it helps keep that valve hot so when you go to pour your wax uh, it won't be clogged up and if it is clogged up I've got this heat gun I can hit it with so here's my other tabs and my little adhesive discs for my wick and here's my number 60 wick for this big candle here and i'll show you some of my other uh, candle molds real quick okay i kind of laid them out here so you can see them so this is one ounce bars and i have some uh, little plastic white ones also that i use i've got like six of them so i can i can pour quite a few one ounce bars at a time and these are real good to just uh Put it in the freezer after you pour it and they'll pop right out especially those uh, plastic ones then i have a one pound block and this is a small candles that uh, it's just a little beehive looking thing and there's where the wicks go and this is a little beehive that has a bear hanging on the outside of it it's pretty neat so I try to write down uh, how much wax they take and what wick it is. So this is a pine cone. See down there. This one, well, you want to be sure and use that mold release because it's hard to get it out of there. So this one used 2.7 ounce and number two wick. This is just a big pillar candle uh almost 10 ounces of wax and it takes a two wick as well 
it's got that little pattern on it uh, that's a really pretty candle and this one just has kind of a crisscross design and it's a square pillar eight ounces of wax number two wick all these are number two wicks except uh, that great big one that i showed you over here and it uses this number 60 wick right there and it takes uh, 13 ounces okay well, that's it so i want to show you how i set up these wicks and get them ready to pour in we'll pour them and uh, let them cool oh something important for these silicon molds use this uh cami 1080 mold release just spray it in there and uh your candle comes out a lot easier like i said you really want to use that on these ones that have a, a pattern oh i didn't show you this one this is a rose flower or a tulip i think it's a tulip some kind of flower and this is the package that goes with it so it's a number two wick and it takes four ounces so try to hang on to these and i just stick them down in the in the candle so i always have that information or right on there with a the sharpie so what's good to know about the weight uh eight ounces of wax if i pour out these one ounce bars i know how much i need to have throw in to melt so that helps with measuring but i'm not measuring today i just got uh, these two pots filled up from uh, my wax cappings so let's get started okay i want to be the hands man and i'll start with these first get this one here set up so this one i use this little piece of copper I put over the top to hold my wick and I have a little this is electric fence wire that I made into kind of a needle thing so I thread my wick on there and always uh, tie your wick uh, run it underneath a piece so if you drop it it doesn't unravel the whole thing so, speaking from experience so thread this through here and this bigger wick is kind of hard to get started through that so I uh, push it through from the inside to the out so this is going to be the top of your candle wick right here so it's going to pull through there we go and you can pull that down a little bit it doesn't need to be that tall there we go. Cut this about right here. Tie a knot around my little copper piece. Then I want to pull that wick tight so it's straight. There we go. Get it kind of centered up. So after your candle cools off and, and is hard, you'll have to cut this off of the bottom so it'll be flat. And also, I use this pan here. I'll take it in there on the stove and uh, I'll put the candle on there and heat up the bottom and get it level because sometimes they're just a little bit off if you didn't have your uh, mold sitting completely level when you uh, set it to cool. Okay, this is ready. We need to hit it with the mold release. doesn't take much so you can do this part here one of two ways you can pour it into this pitcher and pour it into your mold uh, or you can just pour it right straight into your mold which is what I've been doing so it's nice and level right in here and you want this thing as full as you can so I'll set it right here once I get it poured and I probably will spill a little bit and if you get some on your hand it's going to be hot and you just have to uh, 
bear with it uh or you can wear some gloves i got some over there but uh it's not too bad smells good i can smell that vanilla so this is a uh, 12.6 ounces of wax start slowing down here when i get to the bottom or the top however you want to look at it just a skosh more there we go it's actually not sitting quite level in there but uh, we'll fix that with our hot pan later as you can see there it'll start uh, cooling off and getting hard all right, let's try these out. I'm, I'm anxious to do these. I haven't done one like that before. Yeah, I should have plenty of wax. It's it's about to right there. We'll do this big one first. So these are double-sided adhesives. Get my wick to where it's fairly straight and it's just it's a foam it's like a foam adhesive thing so there it's stuck onto the wick now peel the back off of this deal boom and try to get it in the center yeah it looks good push it down in there good now use these little gadgets so it's got like a little slit there to kind of grab your wick. There. So that looks centered. I need to pull it up a little bit. Yeah, it looks good. So set these up. I bought these wicks separate a long time ago. And this is the first time I've ever used them. I've always used the silicon molds before. These are handy. I was trying to think how I would do that before I knew they even made these. I was thinking I was going to hot glue it down in there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this looks like it's going to work good. And the reason, the way I found out about them. I bought these, and when I clicked on it, it says, you know how Amazon suggests other things you might want, and this popped up, and these. And I was like, oh, yeah. And it was like uh, $8 for all these and these adhesives. And they sell them individually, too. So if you run out of these little stickers, you can just buy those. And I think my little metal pieces are a little bit wide for this, but uh, we'll make it work. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, looks good. Get these out of the way in case I have a wax blowout, which if you've watched my wax videos before, it's likely. <laughs> So yeah, don't do this in your house. I'm out in the barn and uh, it's rainy today. Good day for working on uh, indoor projects. I really like these. That makes it really easy. Okay. Let's uh, fill her up. Now that glass might get hot. Like I got one little floaty in there. But that wax has come out pretty clean. I'm gonna shut it off right there. Make sure I got room for my lid. Probably would be better with the pitcher on this because it's it's really tiny right there. And it's not consistent on where it comes out of that spout. I don't call it good. 
And let's uh, center that up. And one more. I'll pull this forward just a hair. Yeah, you don't spill it when you put the spigot down in it. Ouch! <laughs> Dripped right on my finger. Woo! I'm going to put just a little bit more in here. Okay, there's our four candles. Let's see how much wax we have left here. Yeah, we got enough. We could do some more. I'd say it's about right, right there. And need to fix a way to, to tilt this thing because that valve's up kind of high. So I will tuck this in. Uh, keep it nice and warm and by tomorrow this one will be all melted and we can uh, make some more with that so I will come back in the morning and show you how these turned out and we'll pull this candle here out of the mold okay it's the next evening it's actually Thanksgiving night so uh Ate me a big old Thanksgiving meal and uh, had me a nice nap. So <laughs> it's uh, dark out now. It's been uh, cold and kind of rainy all day today. So, but kind of more of a mist. We didn't get a lot of accumulation. So let's check out these candles and see how they turned out. So yeah, that looks nice. Take the little thing off there. Got a little bit of wax build up right there where I spilled some on, so I need to scrape that off. See if our little fit. Need to trim that wick. Yeah, that turned out nice. I like that. You can see the little sticker there that held the wick down. So. Spilled a little wax on there. I need to clean it up some. So trim this wick off. Just like that. Smells good. This had the vanilla scent in it. Let's check these out. So that wick just snaps out of that hole. There's a little sticker. Looks like I got a little wax on this one too. Yeah, that's nice. So you can uh, put a little sticker up here if you want. Uh, like I could put Jerome B Farm wax or whatever on there. I like these. Uh, I think I said earlier I'm going to put a link to these. So it came in a case, I think 12 of these. Not, it wasn't, wasn't too pricey either. And I like this kind of candle because the wax stays in the little jar and there's no danger of like a melt, melt out, blow out on the side and all the wax go down you get a big flame. And if no one's around, you know, that's a fire hazard. So kind of weird looking the uh the wax pulls away from the sides in some areas and it's stuck to the glass there it's kind of odd that's on the inside okay let's get this big dude out of here so you can't just pull this out because the the wick here will hold it Sometimes it's kind of hard to pull, but it's released from that mold. You can see, I have a little pair of pliers here and I grab that. So 
So this is a bigger wick than that other. A little bit of dark spot on there. Just a little bit of impurities in that wax. Not sure what that's from. Yes, that's a that's a nice candle there. And I have no idea if I sold these how much I should ask for them. You know, this jar alone was, let's see, probably about $6, a little less than $6. That's before I even did anything with it. So, so I've got uh, my crock pot is completely melted now. So I'm going to transfer that wax up into here as much as I can. And then I'll turn that off and get this filled back up. So a little tip on gloves when you're handling hot stuff. And I learned this from watching uh, like pit boss channels for doing smokers and meat and handling that meat when it's really hot. Get you some uh, glove insulators. And these are like uh, eight mil. I don't remember. They're a heavy, heavier mil nitrile glove. And you just slide these on over your glove insulators. And you can handle some really hot stuff with that and it won't burn you at all. And if it gets too hot, you have a little warning, you know, you can feel it getting hot so you can back off of it. So you can grab like a, a brisket right off the smoker that's uh, 190 degrees and doesn't even phase you. So don't wear nice clothes, good clothes when you do this because if you get any wax on you, it's liable to not come off. And this crock pot, I believe, heats to 200 degrees. And it's turned black on the bottom. Had a little bit of black start coming out. But yeah, I'll look down in there. See what that does to that wax? It's It gets too hot. So while this is hot, I'm gonna clean that out of there. I'm hoping this will wipe right out of there. Yeah, it is for the most part. Man, look at that. How yucky that turned that wax there on the bottom. You do not want that mixed in with your good wax. So this took two days to heat before it was melted all the way through. Yeah, I got it fairly clean. I'll come back with a heat gun and clean that up the rest of the way. Yeah, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, making candles on a small scale. Uh, if you wanted to do a lot of candles and you had a lot of molds, you want to get one of these pitchers that's about twice that size and have you a lot more capacity in what you heat with and in something that you can control the heat a lot better than a crock pot because you saw what it, it scorched that wax there on the bottom so yeah got us some uh, nice candles i think they turned out good and uh these make great christmas presents so i'll give some of these away uh, to some of my kids and stuff like that. I'm not, not sure what I'll be doing next on the bees. Uh, I do need to make some sugar cakes. I may try to do some lip balm uh, later on. Uh, with the lip balm, I use a little tiny crock pot uh, to do small batches. And the trick to lip balm is mixing the right ratios of the wax to the non-waxy oil and uh, the essential oils that you add to it like peppermint spearmint uh eucalyptus stuff like that and it doesn't take much to go from uh really hard to too soft so it's uh it's kind of trial and error till you get it just right and i haven't made a whole lot of it so i don't have a real good recipe uh i just kind of tried it you know heat it up mix it 
cool it off, try one and see the consistency and, and just keep adding wax or the oils until you get it, get it how you want it. So uh, that, that might be the next one, I don't know. But anyway, I uh, hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving and I'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Give me a thumbs up before you sign out of here and don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.